Hello and welcome to Smart Tech for Any Age. If you're over 50, 60, or even 70, and just getting started with AI tools like ChatGPT, you're in the right place. This video and this channel is all about making you feel comfortable and not overwhelmed. I'm gonna walk you through five common mistakes that people make when they first start out with ChatGPT, especially those that did not grow up with a smartphone glued to their hands. I have made all these mistakes myself. So today, we're not only gonna look at what to avoid, but also how to fix them, step by step. I'll be with you every step of the way. No tech talk, just friendly help. So first things first, what is ChatGPT? Think of it as a super helpful friend who's always there to answer your questions, help you write things, suggest recipes, plan your week, and even craft a sweet message to your grandkids. And the best part, you don't need to install anything. It's free. You just type in a question and it answers like a conversation. So for example, this is what it looks like. This is a text box. And whatever you type in here is how you communicate with ChatGPT. The first mistake many people make with ChatGPT is not giving it enough detail. If you don't tell it enough what to do, it's not going to read your mind and give you the answer that you might be looking for. Let me give you an example. Let's say we come to ChatGPT and we type something generic like what to make for dinner. What it comes back with is five very generic things. Grilled cheese, tomato soup, eggs on toast, quesadillas, pasta, salmon. Great. But chances are, this is not going to pertain to what either you have on in stock in your pantry or your fridge or what you feel like having. The fix for not enough detail is obviously just giving it a little more information on your question. How about we do something like this? I have chicken and carrots and rice. What can I make that's easy and healthy? Now you see how much more detail you're giving it. And the more information it has to work with, the better the reply can give you. Just some quick information of what you have at home. And it gave you complete recipes. One pan chicken, carrot and rice skillet. Give you ingredients list and also instructions how to make it. And give you actually a few different bonus twist ideas of how to zest this particular dish up. Now, do you see the difference it made between just asking it for dinner and just a few more words of giving us exactly what you have on hand? This answer, if you do have this ingredients at home, will be very useful if you can actually use this to make a meal. Hello, pardon the interruption. If you're enjoying what you're seeing and hearing, can you please just take a tiny moment and tap on the like button, the subscribe button. If you know someone that can make use of this video, the share button. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. Now let's get back to it. The second mistake that people do using ChatGPT is only expecting one answer back in return. It's not like a vending machine when you go up some coins in, you get one thing and walk away. The most powerful part of ChatGPT is its ability for you to ask follow-up questions, refining the answers the way you see fit. Here's what I mean. Let's say you want to write a birthday message for a 12-year-old grandson who loves video games. Now that's a really detailed prompt right there. And let's see what it gives us. In no time flat, we've got a nice playful message for your grandson. Let's read it through. Level 12 unlocked. I'm so proud of an amazing, kind young man that you become. And nothing. Hope your day is filled with epic wins, cool loot, and plenty of kick. This sounds great. We can use this. If you want to go a little further, you can continue the conversation. You can say something like, make it superhero theme. And more formal. If that's what you're looking for. From this back and forth conversation with ChatGPT, we get something that's really useful for us. Today we celebrate a day of a true hero. The moment you arrive, heart of a champion. 
Official Reach Level 12, Great Adventure Awaits, Superhero Origin Story. Remember, the second mistake's fix is just keep the conversation going. The third mistake that people use with this kind of tool is using it like Google, like a search engine. The fix to that is giving it a task. Ask it to do something for you because that's where it really, really shines. It's easy to use ChatGPT like Google. You can ask it things like, what is best jazz musicians? Or what is the tomato soup recipe? And sure, it will answer those. But when you give it a task and you do, it takes it to the next level. It can do things like, write a thank you note to a neighbor who helped me out after my surgery. Or make a three day travel plan to Palm Springs for a retired couple at 200 bucks a day. Or one of these, one of my favorites, explain Medicare Part C like I'm a five year old child. The little thing at the end, like a five year old child, can really show the power of ChatGPT and if information it can give. Give it a try. Let me show the difference between asking it something like a Google or giving it a task to perform. I like jazz music. So if we simply type in best jazz musicians, it'll give you a no-nonsense list of different musicians, what they play, and why they matter in the history of jazz. And it's a great list, nothing wrong with that. But you can simply and easily get the same information on Google. But if you give it a task, how about something like create a five song playlist of jazz songs for a quiet dinner with my date. Let's add that. And let's see what happens. All right, now we're talking. You want a smooth, intimate, and vibey track for a quiet dinner date. So um, I suggested these three songs for the artist and why it works. Classic romance, and that's what it's all about. Now you see how this is so much more useful than simply using it as a search engine. Mistake number four, afraid of breaking it. And the fix, you're just gonna know inside, there's nothing you can really do to break ChatGPT. And there's no right or even wrong way to use it. Just use your creativity and learn the best you can. One of the biggest fears that I hear from other people is, I'm scared that I'll mess up. Let me tell you, there's no wrong way to use ChatGPT. You can't crash it. You certainly cannot offend it. And you can always delete the chat if you don't like the way it's going. And if you don't believe me, we can type in really silly things like, tell me a dad joke about pizza. Why did the pizza maker go broke? Because he couldn't make enough dough. Now you see what I mean? You really cannot go wrong with this tool. Let's try another. Pretend you're my personal butler and make a to-do list. And in just a couple of seconds, it comes back with something pretty darn funny and remarkably useful. It's calling me, but of course, sir. And it's crafting me my day of stretching and mindfulness in the morning, some coffee, some health and fitness, some YouTube things, correspondence and appointments. My point is just don't overthink it. Just have fun and try it out. Mistake number five of people who are new to ChatGPT, not knowing where to start. To fix, start with simple real life questions or something that matters to you. A lot of people open ChatGPT, they stare at the screen like it's judging them. Spoiler, it's not. Here are five easy, simple prompts you can get started with today. Give me a one week walking plan to stay active after 60. Here's our plan with day-to-day, -day, which activity it is, the duration, and why it's good for you. And even some tips for staying consistent. Here's another one that you can try. What's a quick joke I can text my granddaughter? Why did a student eat her homework? Because the teacher said it was a piece of cake. Good, right? Let's try a couple more. Try this one out. 
Help me write a short poem for my wife's birthday. Guys, jot this one down. Okay, here's a warm, heartfelt short poem for her. We can read through this. Hey, it's no Robert Frost, but it's pretty amazing. Let's try one more. What are five fun things to do in Austin, Texas? So it's telling us Austin offers a vibrant mix of activities for lots of different interests. We can go to the springs, definitely the Austin's music scene, a lake, go to the state capitol, and then check out this bridge. Now, everything I just shared with you, they're not random. These are everyday things that people will find useful and this tool can help you with. I know I said only five mistakes, but here's a bonus one just for you. Giving up too easy. I see that a lot with beginners with ChatGPT. The fix, start slow and give it 10 minutes a day. The truth is, learning to do anything new takes time and practice. You don't expect to play the guitar in just a few days, right? Give ChatGPT 10 minutes a day. Have it give you a recipe. Make a to-do list. Ask some questions that you always want to know the answer to, just for fun. You'd be amazed at how quickly this feels natural. And there we have it, the five biggest mistakes that beginners make using ChatGPT, plus one bonus one. Let's recap. First one, being too vague. Number two, thinking is just a one-time thing. Number three, treating it like Google. Four, thinking we can break it. Number five, not knowing how to start. And a bonus tip, giving up too soon. If any of these sounds like you, rest assured that you're not alone. But now, armed with the knowledge of this video, you know how to fix it. And if you forgot to take notes during this video, no problem. I put all this together for you in an easy, free, downloadable PDF file. That download link is right in the description below. Click on it grab it, and I really hope you start using it. Thank you for watching Smart Tech for Any Age. If you find this video useful, please hit like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. If you're brand new to ChatGPT, I have a couple videos, one on what it can do for you, and one on how to set it up. I hope you find all this helpful. I will see you next time. Bye.